If you are in the right place, then uh, you should be on assignment uh, 13 7. Looking at the top pictures, there are six questions up there. So, what is going on? I'd like you to um, address the first two if you can. So, what you have here is you have a circuit, it's got a capacitor right here, and it's got a battery, which we draw like this. Oops. And it's got a switch. And then over here somewhere it's got a resistor. So the question is, given that's the case, when I close that switch, the moment I close that switch, tell me what is going on at the capacitor and at the resistor. So if you've not done that yet, you need to pause. If you have done that, here we go. Um, so what happening? what's happening at the capacitor? Well, when I close the switch, the capacitor is uncharged. So charge can pile up on the plates. And if charge pile up that plate, charge can flee this plate and head back, making this char this plate positive. So initially, this thing is perfectly happy, which means it's basically doing nothing. It's acting like a wire. Meantime, resistors do what resistors do. So what's happening with the capacitor? No effect, but starts building up charge. So what's happening is the battery starts to charge the capacitor. Okay, What's happening at the resistor? Well, at the resistor, we are getting V equals IR, because since the capacitor is doing nothing, it has no voltage yet, we flip the switch, then we're just going to have the current is going to be equal to V over R. And that is what's happening at the resistor. All right. Now, uh, look at the second set of questions a little while after you close the switch. Take a look at it, and then we'll have a discussion. In three, two, make sure you pause. One, two, one, go. Okay, so at the capacitor. After a little bit of time, what's happening? Well, the capacitor has some charge now, which means its negative side of the plate is, uh, is pointed against the negative part of the battery. So it's a battery pointed backwards. It is building something we sometimes call back voltage. In other words, it's trying to shut down the circuit. Now, it doesn't have enough, a little ways into this, it doesn't have enough to actually stop the circuit. So there's still current flowing through this wire. So at the resistor, what we got going on, the resistor, it's no longer V equals IR. It's going to be less than, the current is going to be less than V over R because the back voltage of the capacitor is slowing it down. Slowing it down. All right. Now, what happens if we wait a really, really long time? So if you haven't thought about it, I need you to think about it. And then um, we will uh, resume. So in three, two, one. After a really long time, what happens? Well, the capacitor is going to keep collecting charge until what? It is fully charged. But what determines what's fully charged? What's fully charged is when you can't put any more, more charge on it, which is when it's voltage is equal to voltage. So the voltage of the capacitor is equal to the voltage of the battery. When that happens, it can't put any more current on there. If you can't put any more current on there, you can't put any more charge on there, that means there's no current can flow into there, so what current's going through the resistor? Nothing. Resistor is shut down. Now you need to know these things because as we go along, we're going to have to anticipate what's happening in the circuit because it makes our problems much, much, much faster and much more reasonable. Uh, so as we're looking at the circuit, we need to understand that when I first slow that switch down, that capacitor is going to initially do nothing. And then as time wears on, it's going to build up a voltage point the other way until it shuts down the, the system. OK? Um, review this if you have to, but we do really, 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 really need to understand that. OK, in a little bit, I'm going to start uh, in 5, 4, 3, 2. Oh, sorry, I should say what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to start uh, with a circuit change with respect to time. OK, in just a second. Um, so five, four, three, two, one. All right, so part of the ramifications of this is that there's time. Time matters. 
So when I ask you what the current in the wire is, we can no longer say, well, it's this, because it won't flip a switch. The resistor pretty much acts immediately like a resistor acts, a battery acts like a battery acts immediately, and a switch acts like a switch match. And so we immediately know what the current in the wire is. When talking about a capacitor, capacitor takes the time to charge. And when it gets done charging, it changes the head the system. So we have a different dynamic. So the question is, how do we calculate what the current is for some time in the future. Now this is going to require doing some calculus, or at least initially it's going to require us doing some calculus. Um, and it doesn't hurt you to do the calculus, so we're going to go ahead and do the calculus anyways. Uh, so we're going to start off with Kirchhoff's law. Kirchhoff's law says for this circuit, zero is the net voltage if I go in a big circle, which is always true. I'm going to start at the battery, so I'm going to go voltage, then I'm going to lose some across the capacitor. Now capacitors, uh, CV equals Q, so Q over C is equal to my current um, voltage of that minus um, IR, All right? And so I've got a beautiful thing to play with down the road. Now, uh, I am curious. I want to find the current. So I need to turn Q into current. The way I'm going to do that is by totally cheating. I'm going to, different. I'm going to go ahead and do a related rates problem. Um, I'm going to take the derivative respect of time on both sides, whether it's legit or not. And so I set this up as zero. Hey, what's my voltage? My voltage is a battery. It's supposed to be constant because it's a beautiful battery that does exactly what it's supposed to do. So therefore, it's change with respect to time is a big whop in zero. Uh, now I get uh, one over C dQ dt minus, and then I get di dt uh, times r. All right, so now I have a differential equation. Except I got dQ dt and di dt, but I need to remember that change in charge with respect to time, well, that's how fast charge is piling onto my plate. That would be the current, would it not? And so therefore, with a little bit of work and a little bit of creativity, I can immediately change this into uh, negative 1 over C dQ dt, which is going to be uh, just I. di dt times R. And if I want to do a little more mathage, I can go, all right, well, uh, that's fun. Uh, but I'm going to do some differential equations here because we know how to do that because we learned that in uh, physics or in calculus class, even though we may not, but we should have learned it in calculus class. And so I end up with this little gem, negative di dt. I'm going to move the r over here um, for reasons that involve where we want to get to. Okay, so I look at that and go, all right, that's nice, uh, but I need my i over here, don't I, if I'm going to do a differential equation? So I don't know what my minus sign here, because I'm not really sure what a minus sign does here, so I'm going to throw a minus sign on the other side, and I get negative 1 over rc equals 1 over i di dt. Now, we've got it set up. Our, our variables are separated, so I move my dt over here, and I integrate both sides, as we learned for differential equations. So if I do my differential equation, I get negative 1 over RC T equals LN, absolute value of, of uh, I. Uh, and uh, I'm going to put a plus, my plus C over here like we did in the other class. Uh, since I'm good to go, I'm going to get rid of my LN E by moving my E to the other side. When I do that, I'm going to get E to the negative 1 over RC, RC times t, and remember my constant up here can get thrown in front. Um, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and make that uh, b for the time being, but we are going to change that in just a little bit, and that's equal to i, and so now I have my current for any time t. Okay, so that's a differential equation, a little bit of fun, we could do that no problem, and it's not a big deal, but we'll finish this, so we're going to find a way around having to do this from scratch every time. Uh, but there's one more thing I want to correct. I want to look at this B. What happens when the time equals zero? When time equals zero, this whole thing up here becomes zero. And that whole thing up here becomes zero. This becomes E to zero, which is one, which means the current is equal to B. Well, what's the current at that very beginning point? Well, the current at the very beginning point is, is V over R, right? We said that in the previous, if just look a little bit up. We know the very beginning point when time equals zero, the capacitor is doing nothing, so my, my current should be V over R, or my maximum current. So I'm going to go ahead and write the word I max equals times E to the negative 1 over RC times T equals I. All right, so that's calculus for doing a simple situation. 
Um, that's some situation. This this calculus is serious, um, but it's a way to do uh, uh, what time something's happening. So I know the current at any time t in the future. Isn't that nice? All right. Now, what happens if I do a slightly different circuit? I'm looking for charge. Make my math easier. One of the things I'm going to do right now is I'm going to say we've charged up our capacitor. Uh oh, I have a pen somewhere. There's my pen. Uh, I'm going to charge up my capacitor using this situation. Then I'm going to break the link. Then I'm going to put a wire in here. And then I'm going to throw the switch again. All right, so what happens there? Capacitor is fully charged. It's got nothing stopping it from discharging. It wants to go from electrons piled up on this plate. Once those electrons come all the way back around to this side over here. So once I close that switch, they're going to start piling in until ultimately the capacitor is discharged. In the meantime, it's going to lead to current. So my question is, what's the charge on the capacitor? The moment I throw the switch, what's my charge on my capacitor? Well, back to Kirchhoff's law. Um, and Kirchhoff's law says the following. It says I got negative IR. In this case, though, what's providing the voltage? Q over C, right? So now I do a little bit of hocus pocus. I go, oh, I want to, I recognize that I is negative DQ DT. And so I, I've already got my differential equation ready to go. And so I move my negative Q over C to the other side, that nice. And I've got uh, negative Q DQ DT. Move my R over while I'm thinking about it. Okay, and then uh, with just a little bit of work, I'm going to take, I'm going to move my Q over, so I get negative 1 over RC equals, I've got a negative, a bad negative, really? I don't think I should have a negative Q over C, but we'll talk about that in a moment if I don't figure this out by then. Okay. So dq, dt, and I got 1 over q again. Look, I got 1 over q. Look, it's consistent as heck. We're getting that 1 over q. So now I'm going to get 1 over rc equals uh, move dt, dt over here. I got 1 over q, uh, dq. And I integrate both sides, and I'm going to get the same sort of thing. 1 over rc times t equals ln absolute value of q. Uh, which was formerly negative, so I guess that's where I lose my negative 2, although I'm a little bit troubled by that. Uh, I put my plus C over here, or plus variable C, not plus capacitor C. Uh, and then I swing my E across, and I do the same thing. I 1 over R, C, T, put my B down here, and then I've got my Q. At time equals 0, what, is my ch what does my charge have to be? Well, this whole thing becomes 1, so B becomes my charge. What's my charge at time equals 0? My charge at time equals 0 is whatever I start with, my maximum charge. So I get Q max uh, E to the 1 over RCT equals Q. So something interesting is happening here. And this happens because Kirchhoff's law always does the same thing. You make a differential equation, you always swing the thing over and it ends up on the bottom. It always gives you an LN, the LN swings across, and so therefore you always end up with the same sort of equation. Um, same sort of equation. Okay, so I should have sucked the minus in and left the minus over here, my bad. Uh, but anyway, so what does that mean? Okay, so I'm going to run out of time in this video, so I'm going to clean this up in just a moment, and um, we'll do it on the next video. Okay, so hopefully you're somewhere on the back, you've been taking notes on the back of the worksheet we're working on, which is worksheet number stalling, stalling 13.7. Okay, uh, you should be right about patterns. We're going to talk about patterns next time, and so pausing, I'm going to stop now and start the